My name is Brittany Haygood. I'm 16 years old. I go to Baldwin High School. My project is the the science behind the moonwalk. This is this has been a fantastic experience for me. Michael Jackson was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana is a lot like the Pittsburgh area because it is known for its steel mills that use a lot of coal and create energy. But Gary, Indiana is known for the creating coal and it's also created dance energy of a new and different kind. Michael Jackson is my hero. He is my hero because he is a wonderful person and a wonderful dancer. People try to dance like him, but can't pull it off. I learned about kinetic energy when I watched Michael Jackson's old videos because amazingly enough, kinetic energy may also be displayed in dance production. Michael Jackson is most famous for some of some of dance history's greatest moves and, and his thriller video is considered one of the greatest videos and best, sell, and best selling video ever made. I'm most impressed by the dance perfected by Michael in the early 1980s. This dance move left the whole world in amazement because it looks impossible to do, but it's not. And science explains it all. You may be familiar with the famous dance move, the moonwalk, but you probably don't know the physics behind it. The main physics concept behind the moonwalk are friction and center of mass. St static friction is a force exerted on an object when it is in contact with some surface but those two surfaces don't move. Kinetic friction is a force exerted on an object when the two surfaces are moving. When dancing, if, Michael ja if Michael's both feet are stationary, then this deals with static friction. Once, uh, once one of his feet slide backwards, then the foot exerts kinetic friction. When doing the moonwalk, Michael's front foot is in line with the center of mass. This makes the frictional force on the foot on the front foot greater than the frictional force of the sliding foot. Michael, Michael then switches his center of mass to the sliding foot by shifting his weight to that foot. Now the frictional force is greater on the original sliding foot. Then and the foot is now sliding and has switched from static friction to kinetic friction. Every time Michael shifts his center of mass, this allows each slide to propel him backwards. If he tried to keep his center of mass on the sliding foot, then he would lose his balance and fall. Finally, that is how Michael Jackson became the hottest dancing machine that Gary Indiana ever created. He used static, static and kinetic friction to invent the moonwalk. Aren't we glad he did this, bro? Maybe if you study a little science, you would make another move that will stun the world. What makes you move? Hi, my name is Vanessa Black and I'm 13 years old. I'm going to Baldwin High School, and I'm going to be in ninth grade. My birthday is August 3rd, 1998. I run track for Baldwin, but I also share for Phil Valley. I like to write poems, sing songs, do all types of dances, and I like to hang with family and friends. I go to church, and I belong to a lot of groups, such as multi Plot Ministry. Now my partner will provide information about herself. Hi, my name is Monique, and I'm 14 years old. I'm going to Carlington Junior Senior High School, and I'm going to be in ninth grade. Um, I like to run track, play softball, and powder puff football, and do gymnastics. I also like to hang out with my friends and family for fun. Now for our video on kinetic energy, what makes you move? What is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy of an object is the energy which makes the motion. This is the force needed to transform a rested object into a state of motion. There are different activities to show how you use kinetic energy. First. Activity is basketball, and you use kinetic energy by bouncing the ball and running up and down the court. 
When the basketball leaves your hand, and it has the most kinetic energy. But the longer the ball travels through the air, the more energy it loses due to friction. The next activity that involves kinetic energy is gymnastics and cheering. Kinetic energy is shown when the gymnast is in motion and when the cheerleader are keeping their position, such as when they stick the landing. The last activity that we are going to show with kinetic energy is a dance. Kinetic energy is the motion that is driving force behind an individual's dance moves. Our graph is based on kinetic energy. It shows how much calories are getting burned in the amount of 30 minutes and by you weighing 125 pounds. We took a survey on our friends in the program and the average weight was about 125 pounds. We showed that cheerleading is the way to burn and it is the quickest way to burn calories. We also determined that basketball was the second activity to burn more calories in less time. Over the summer, Monique and I learned a lot about kinetic energy. So from everything that we have learned and that we have shared, I hope you keep on the move and use that kinetic energy. Hi, I'm Bia Habushi. I'm 14 years old and I go to Baldwin High School. I do track and in the summer I go to Melting Pot Ministries summer camp and we, we're doing a STEM program this year. Me and my partner Precious Malloy, we're working on a project about sound energy. I never realized how sound affects your everyday energy. My partner and I are very interested in a physical activity that has to deal with sound. We enjoy music, dancing, swimming, and just plain old talking on the phone. Some of you may not understand what sound energy is. Sound energy is the energy produced by sound vibrations as they travel through a specific medium. The speed of vibrations also causes change in the sound that one hears. Fast vibrations produce a high note, while slow vibrations produce a low note. The sound energy is a form of mechanical energy. Sound can only be heard within the range of the sound because the energy of the movement of the particles decreases over distance traveled. Sound waves require a medium to travel through. Sound is measured in decibels. Decibels are used to measure the intensity or loudness of a sound. Zero decibels is the quietest sound measured and 120 decibels is the loudest sound commonly measured. Here is a chart of the different everyday sounds people listen to. As you can see, if you listen to these sounds for a period of time, you will either develop hearing loss or begin to experience pain in your ears. Have you ever noticed that you can't hear as well underwater as you can on top of water? Well, we did some research and it turns out that the sound travels about five times faster than air. The eardrum is too close to the density of water to stop any sound wave. There are two ways that sound waves can be transferred. It's air conductivity and bone conductivity. The underwater soundscape that we hear as a result of bone conduction is pure or hi-fi. Since all that talk about swimming and hearing, I want to go swimming. Hey Precious, can you hear me? I'm coming in. Hello, my name is Ayuba Sharia. I am 14 years old, going to the ninth grade at Baldwin High School. I love to do sports. My favorite sports are soccer, basketball, and football. My favorite subject in school are math and children's studies. Hello, my name is Philip Harding. I am 14 years old, going to the ninth grade at Rutherford Park High School. I love sports. My favorite sports are basketball, football, and track. My favorite subjects in school are math and language arts. Our science project is about basketball, uh, using potential energy. Uh, enjoy. Athletes usually think that only training and conditioning will help their game. What they do not realize is that science can help it as well. For instance, when playing basketball, it can be important to know the potential of the ball, such as when dribbling. Potential energy is the name for energy stored in an object or the potential of an object to do work. There are factors that deal with potential energy, mass of the object, acceleration of gravity, 
and the height of the object. We can calculate the potential energy by applying this formula potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Our goal in this experiment is to figure different potential energies from different heights ranging 1 to 7 feet. As shown in this diagram, we dropped the ball from each of these heights and recorded the height of the ball bouncing back up. We recorded our results and formed the chart of the ball bouncing back up to its potential energy. The higher the height of the larger, the higher the height, the larger of the potential energy. We came up with these results by using information we gathered from our experiment and applying to the formula. Potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. This chart illuminates that potential energy of the ball works dependent on the height of the object from the ground before release. All in all, we realize that potential energy has a big influence on the game of basketball. After experimenting and researching potential energy, we figured out that the height has an effect of the bounce of the ball. This information has allowed us not only improve our game, but also taught us the importance importance of potential energy and how to calculate it. Finally, we would like to thank the National Energy Technology Laboratory here in South Park and Leah Sokup and her team for helping further our education and giving us the opportunity to research such interesting projects. We appreciate your time and effort.